The Nindy scene is booming right now on the Nintendo Switch. It feels like every week we are treated to a game that provides an experience we weren't expecting. With so many entries in the roguelike genre, new titles need to present new ideas or run the risk of oversaturation. Nier Avoider does just that. It expertly mixes together RPG elements into a twin-stick shooter that's set in a futuristic setting that feels like it's from an 80s sci-fi movie. Between blowing up enemies in a spectacular fashion and building a robot from the most ridiculous components you can find, Nero Voider proves once again that indie games should not be overlooked. To start off, you'll choose from three different types, Dasher, Rampage, and Fortress. The Dasher class relies on speed, opting to take enemies head-on by quickly attacking with melee weapons. If you like the idea of an all-out offense but prefer to do it at a distance and blow stuff up, then the Rampage class is more your style. Lastly, the Fortress class is tailored for players who think a strong offense is a good defense by providing your mech with stronger armor. After you've decided upon a mech type, the tutorial proceeds to assist you with learning how to use your weapon systems. After your instructor accidentally triggers the alarm to alert the enemies, you're thrown into a sink or swim scenario where you are told to use the shoulder buttons in order to destroy your attackers. Your mech is outfitted with two weapons at a time, each one being assigned to a left or right shoulder button. The last instruction you're given is how to activate your special ability. At the start of the game, you'll choose from one special power from a list of abilities. The abilities can range from passive effects such as an extra life, to active effects like mech repair that can be used multiple times after a recharge. Defeated enemies will leave behind energy that is then collected to recharge the active abilities. It's not that long into the main campaign and after a few deaths that you realize you've barely scratched the surface of what you'll need to learn. The most important aspect you'll need to learn early if you want any success is the complicated component upgrading system. As you make your way through each level, your fallen enemies drop loot that can be collected. This loot will either be new components for your mech or components that can be turned into scrap that will enable you to boost your existing components. After each level, you're taken back to an inventory screen to review what you've collected and improve your mech accordingly. Unfortunately, the tutorial doesn't explain anything about the inventory menu and it can get quite complicated. All of the mechs have five different upgradable components. Vision, core, transport, and then your left and right guns. The first three components are class specific, so if you've collected loot for one of the other classes, you won't be able to use it. In the menu, there's an option to automatically scrap non-class components, so that can save you some time. The selection of usable components can become complicated as well, as each component has multiple attributes to consider. For example, the core system component is partially responsible for your HP, your weapon's ammunition gauge, as well as a third special feature like boosted weapon recharge. RPG fans are going to feel like a kid in a candy store with all of the different combinations and possibilities, but the casual gamer might just feel a little overwhelmed. Thankfully, the weapon selection is less convoluted, allowing all weapons to be utilized by all classes. The levels have been designed to encourage experimentation. Smaller maps are more suited for precision guns like lasers and beams, while the larger maps are easier to navigate with large-scale damage weapons like the nuke. A lot of creativity went into the weapon design, with names such as the big double beam of judging to the shotgun of shiny break. Even after 30 to 50 playthroughs, each campaign is still revealing weapons I haven't used before. So after you've gotten through the tutorial, and mastered the inventory system, it's finally time to start blowing stuff up, and your avoider doesn't disappoint. With countless weapons to choose from, there is no end to the fun of destroying hundreds of enemies on each level. The twin stick battle system is smooth and precise. The left joystick controls the movement of your mech, and the right joystick controls the directions that your weapons will fire in. If you're thinking that you're just going to run in guns a blazing and expect victory, then think again. The amount of enemies, as well as the environmental obstacles, requires strategic thinking and careful technique. It takes an understanding of the weapon type you've chosen and some patience to make it to the end of the level. In a permadeath setting, throwing caution to the wind is going to lead to nothing but frustration. Everything about Nier Avoider just feels good. As a fan of the RPG genre, I love how strategy-based thinking has been perfectly mixed with heart-pounding action. The biggest concern with roguelike permadeath is avoiding that feeling of staleness, and there is no concern for that here. For one of the best indie experiences on the Switch so far, the small investment into learning the complexity of the inventory system is going to be more than worth it.
Thank you for watching the review. For more great content, you can check us out at nintendoworldreport.com or you can support us on patreon.com slash nwr.